Okay, algebra, we're doing our second transformation of functions. We're still dealing with the absolute value function. Um, that should be at the origin, which is f of x equals absolute value of x, the graph being y equals absolute value of x. So first of all, let your um, f of x equal absolute value of x, that's your parent function, and g of x equal x minus 3, h of x equal x plus 2. Notice today we are inside the parentheses, where yesterday we were f of x minus 3 and f of x plus 2. We were outside the parentheses. And this right here moved um, your absolute value graph up and down, so down and up. Minus 3 would be down, plus 2 would be up. That's what we did yesterday. Today we are inside the parentheses, so we're moving in a different direction. Um, so first of all, let's write a formula for g of x in terms of absolute value x. Oops. So that means I'm going to change my g of x, and this is why we practiced this in the first half of the unit. Um, I'm going to have absolute value x minus 3. So if you look, instead of x in the absolute value, we're putting x minus 3. And then the next one is h of x is absolute, absolute value x plus 2, which means instead of that x, we're going to put x plus 2 in there. Next, you're going to complete the table. Um, the first one is super simple. We're just doing absolute value of everything. And then you are doing um, what we did was g of x, which is absolute value x um, minus 3 and absolute value x plus 2. So negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6, which is positive 6. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, absolute value positive 5, etc. Um, looking at the h of x, I get negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, absolute value is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, etc. And you see that table fully filled in. Cool. So get those down if you didn't calculate them on your own. Um, I'm trying to save some time and not do all of the basic math um, with you watching. Okay, we're going to graph these next. I've got red, blue, and green on the next page. So a little reminder, that parent function has a slope of negative 1 and positive 1, and my um, vertex is at 0, 0. And yesterday, when we did x plus 2, we would go up 2 and have the same. And then when we did x minus 3, just giving you some examples, we'd go down 3 and do the same thing. Okay, this one's different though, watch. Okay, here is my parent function. It's called a parent function because it's the most basic. Um, and right over here, I shifted 2 to the left. It's crazy because x plus 2 is left 2 units and x minus 3 is right 3 units. So how does the graph of y equals f of x relate to the graph of y equals f of x minus 3? Um, we shifted, let's see, translated. Oops, I'm still in my highlighter form. That's okay. Translated 3 to the right. And here we translated 2 to the left. And if you look at that one, we went down 3. We're here, I'm going right 3. We're going to move on from this one, though. Next page. Okay, we're getting into the exercises now. Um, Carla and 
Isamar are disagreeing over which way the graph of the function absolute value x plus 3 is translated relative to the graph of f of x. Car Carla believes that the graph of g is to the right of the graph of f. Isamar believes the graph is to the left, who is correct. Um, well, if this is my function, and I'm comparing it to the parent, the parent is at the origin, and we just talked about um, the x plus 3 goes to the left, which is counterintuitive, but still correct. Okay? Let f of x equal absolute value x, where x can be any real number. It's our parent function. Write a formula for the function whose graph is the transformation of the graph given by the instructions below. So if we're going right, right 5, um, do we need a different number? Nope. Well, I guess we should. Let's call this one a for apple. If we're going 5 units to the right, that means we need x minus 5. Um, if we go down 3, we do outside. Now you have to learn these and remember them. They're not difficult, you just have to know them. Here's where we have to remember, this has been a while, um, we do a vertical scaling or a stretch with a scale factor of 5. Um, the vertical scaling is on the outside of our absolute value. So let's do C. A vertical scaling of 5 is just on the outside. Everything is increased by a power of 5. Um, translation for units left, that's on the inside, and we're plussing 4. Some students think that left is the negative direction, and this is opposite. If you want to try to remember that, that's fine. Um, a vertical scaling, a vertical shrink with a scale factor of one-third, that is still on the outside. So we do one-third absolute value x. All of our vertical ones are on the outside. So I've got vertical on the outside, vertical on the outside. The stretch and shrink is just, that's a whole number, and this is a fraction. Okay, now is when things get just a tad bit more difficult, because we have to write those equations. Um, this one's on the x-axis. We just shifted this direction 6, so it's a negative 6. So our it's y equals absolute value x plus 6. Ooh, this one is neg or it's a reflection, so we know that it's going to be negative, but this is definitely not a parent function because a parent function has a slope of negative 1 and 1. So we have to figure out um, over 4, down 4. If this is a 4, that's a 2, so we cut everything in half. Um, if this is a 2, that's a 1. Okay, that's a 2, that's a 1. So it looks like we're doing a vertical shrink. Um, so y equals negative 2, absolute value x. So pick a point and see how you get to a point on the parent function and see how you get to the, um, the function you're trying to, to analyze. Okay, this one does have a slope of 1, so we're not stretching or shrinking but we did move this direction about one and a half. So all we did is go to the right by one and a half. X minus 1.5, or you could say X minus three halves. It doesn't matter. They're equal. Okay, this does have a slope of one and negative one, so we haven't stretched or shrunk, but we did go up four. So that's on the outside of our um, absolute value sign. Okay, these are all the transformations we learned. They're all jumbled together now, sort of fun. Ooh, um, our origin is zero. Sorry, our vertex is at the origin, so we know that this is a stretch or a shrink. So let's try to figure that out. Um, I'm going to draw our parent function so I can compare. So if this is an input of an input of 2, 
our output is 2. So input 2, output 2. Now compare it, I've got an input 2 output of 1 half. So f of 2 equals 1 half for our new function, okay, for that one. For our parent function, I'm going to do that in red, we had f of 2 equals 2. So how did we get there? How do we change a 2 into a 1 half? Well, 2 times 1 fourth equals 1 half. So this right here is our shrink function. So I've got y equals 1 fourth times, oops, times absolute value of x. Okay, you can get your calculators out and test a few things, but I know my parent function is that, and I have to get to this. So I need to take a fourth of it. If you think about $2, how do I get 50 cents? It's a fourth of it. Okay, last, or we have exercise four and five left. Um, we don't have a graph for this one, but we can come up with a formula. These are actually, I think, easier than the graphs. Um, so we're doing a few things now, not just up, down, or left, right. Now we're going up, down, and left, right. So if we have, um, write a formula for the function whose graph. So if we're doing the graphs, that means we're y equals. If we're going two units left, left is the negative direction. So I do x plus 2 and four units down. Um, if I'm going two and a half units to the right, that's the positive direction. So 2.5 and then up 1. See the pattern? A vertical scaling with a scale factor of a half. That's a shrink. So I put that on the outside. And a translation three units right. Right is the positive direction. So I go minus 5. Sort of fun. A translation five units right. Right is the positive direction and a vertical scale by reflecting across the x-axis. So I need to squeeze a negative 2 in there. Oh, I went on. Um, now we're going to look at graphs and come up with things. Okay, these can be easy and hard. We just look at this vertex. I can actually go, my vertex is negative 2, negative 4. And I can use that directly, or I can say, if you, once I write the equation, um, you can see the, hopefully the pattern. So I've got y equals, um, I shifted two in the, the left direction, which is minus, and then down. So you see where they go. I'm over 5, down 2. So I've got 5 in the positive direction, and then down 2. This is my vertex. Ooh, I flipped over, so I definitely need a negative. I still, my slopes are negative 1 and 1, so I'm happy with that. My vertex here is negative 4, 0. So I want x plus 4, and then I don't have to do plus 0. That doesn't have to be there. Pretty fun. We haven't had to stretch or shrink yet. And here, let's see. I'm over 3, up 3. So I'm 3 in the positive direction. So it's minus 3, and I'm up 3. That's it. I hope that was fun. I really enjoyed that lesson. Um, it's sort of putting the things we did yesterday and today together into sort of a culminating, culminating um, practice. Good job.